Welcome back to Wake Up with Cheddar. With the coronavirus pandemic continuing to batter the U.S. economy and millions of Americans still out of work, some are questioning how a Joe Biden presidency would impact the markets. Let's bring in Mark Hamrick, senior economic analyst at Bankrate. Mark, really great to have you on. Um, a lot of investors thinking the markets might actually pull back if Joe Biden were to win in November. Uh, what is behind some of that concern? Well, I think people are uh, perhaps anticipating that uh, Biden could embody some of the characteristics of the more progressive parts of the party, but uh, Joe Biden is the nominee. It is not Elizabeth Warren, it is not Bernie Sanders. And what we don't really know right now and what we cannot know is whether the market is effectively baking in a Biden presidency or whether it's somehow seeing that there's a Trump uh, election surprise win. Uh, but to the extent that we typically would say that the market uh, knows what is ahead, uh, if, if the market's recent strong performance, at least as embodied by the NASDAQ and the S&P 500 indices, uh, are any indication, we would say that the market has to be discounting a Biden win simply because of the fact that he is leading in the polls. Uh, having said that, I think uh, I will never try to predict the actual outcome of an election ever again after uh, the experiences of recent years. But, you know, I do think that uh, right now, given the fact that we're, you know, fewer than 75 days away from the election, obviously politics is yet another source of uncertainty when we're awash in sources of uncertainty, such as the behavior of the virus uh, and the downturn of the economy. And so uh, that is a negative, but that will be something that uh, presumably will be resolved sooner rather than later. I remember, I'm glad you mentioned 2016. I was working for a different network on the floor of the stock exchange. And I remember futures uh, after um, Trump was uh, won in November. I remember futures yeah. were down uh, for the Dow hundreds of points. And yeah. then investors kind of took another look at some of the policies and quickly the market bounced back. Uh, so is some of it like a knee jerk reaction? Well, uh, certainly that was a knee-jerk reaction to the extent that, you know, you had the Dow futures down about a thousand points and then everything seemed to be okay uh, in terms of the market within 24 hours. But, you know, the market is, you know, you could say the market is also always wrong, right? Because it's always in search of the next price uh, and not ever settling for the current one. Uh, but I think ultimately we have to remember historically Democrats uh, result in stronger stock prices in terms of who controls the White House. That isn't uh, me pulling for anybody because I'm professionally politically agnostic, but that is a historical fact. Uh, and we know that uh, Donald Trump had essentially come to office, I would say promising to address income inequality in our country with so many uh, communities and uh, certainly rural areas of our country left behind by the economic recovery and expansion. Uh, but right now, you cannot say that those problems have been resolved. So, uh, you know, I think ultimately, if you try to balance things out a little bit, you have to say that uh, Biden comes to the table with another approach trying to strengthen the American middle class uh, coming decades after the fact that we've had this income inequality dynamic. Uh, and whether he can do that remains to be seen. But uh, Donald Trump will have his opportunity to try to address that next week. I do have to say, though, you know, going into the RNC, uh, the, the actual sort of policy proposals that uh, Trump seems to be clinging to are, are few and far between. I mean, you sort of talk about the elimination of the payroll tax, which would do uh, great harm to funding of the Social Security Trust Fund. One has to think that there would be other tax cuts uh, coming down the line as well. And then he basically lately seems to really be focusing on law and order and, uh, and that he's not a socialist. Uh, no one uh, has ever heard, I think, Joe Biden quote Karl Marx in terms of clinging to that mantle either. So I think that charge is suspect. And I think the fact that uh, he is the centrist of the Democratic Party who has won the nomination sort of affirms that fact. Uh, Joe Biden also, as we know, picked Kamala Harris uh, to be his VP. She is largely seen um, as a friend to Silicon Valley. We know tech stocks have, have really led the rally in the last few months. Um, do you think that that made investors feel a little bit better? 
Well, perhaps, but you know, these days, I think if you're trying to find areas of bipartisan agreement in the Congress, and we know that's been difficult here lately with the lack of another relief bill, I think that some regulation of technology, if the Dems were to take control of Congress, is likely. Perhaps not as aggressive as what we've seen in Europe in recent years, but something, because we know that there uh, was great promise for uh, just to use an example, social media about 10 years ago, it was seen as the possible uh, predecessor to uh, a wave of democracy being unleashed around the world. And unfortunately, uh, there's been a dark side to social technology or media as well uh, that has also helped, uh, let's say, authoritarian figures retain a grip on uh, power. And that was something that we didn't see before. Uh, just exactly what that kind of regulation might look like remains to be seen, but I do feel like this is an area where members of both parties are coming together, and uh, uh, Kamala Harris herself uh, can't overcome uh, that movement, which uh, has a great deal of momentum right now. Uh, Joe Biden has a, has a big plan for an economic recovery. He talks about infrastructure spending. It's actually a $2 trillion plan. Uh, how is he planning to pay for that? Well, we know that probably that and, and the fact that he plans to raise taxes are probably the two centerpieces of, I would say, uh, what, what seems most obvious or likely uh, with the Biden presidency. Um, so I think that's been fairly well enunciated. But the other part of that is these days in Washington, and we're talking about at a time when the White House and the Senate are controlled by Republicans have previously seen as uh, being uh, the staunchest advocates for, uh, let's say, uh, fiscal credibility, uh, that, that there, <laughs> there's a shortage of people uh, speaking in behalf of, uh, let's say, voting against deficit spending. So it'll be very interesting to see how that dynamic presents itself in future years. And even Jerome Powell these days is, is, is saying, basically, let's not worry about that right now. What we really need to do is focus on getting the economy on track. And the FOMC minutes this week uh, referenced uh, the notion that a number of FOMC members were basically saying, if, if we're going to uh, provide some stronger under, underpinnings to the job market. We need uh, some more relief legislation to come through the Congress. Um, all right, we have to leave it there. Mark Hamrick, Senior Economic Analyst at Bankrate. Great to have you on this morning. Appreciate it.